Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my 5th edition custom campaign, uh, Edelond Chronicles. This is the second episode, and I'm Savvy, and I'll be your dungeon master. In the last episode, we were introduced to the three characters. We had Dorn Greycastle, Pendle Lock and Key, and Brimey the Dwarf. Don't worry. He's not that important anyways. Um, they were introduced and their stories were told on why they've come to Neverwinter and how they've all met up at what seems to be a location um, that there was a notice for. So at 6 p.m. they all met at the Sleeping Dragon. Um, it was a basic introduction episode last time. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more details here and set up some of this, um, some of the story for further uh, customization in the campaign. Sure, sounds good. Um, you may notice that if you're watching the video portion of this, I just have a random picture up here. Um, if you're interested in creating artwork for uh, the Edelin Chronicles, feel free to let me know. Uh, you can post a comment below, send us a personal message, um, anything along those lines. We'll, f we'll promote you, we'll give you uh, a space on in the video. And uh, once again, if you're interested in doing any artwork, characters, maps, be sure to get in contact, let me know. Um, so let's rejoin our characters and see how it goes. Just another side note. There is a bit of difficulty with the audio in this session. Um, you might hear my voice echoing a little bit. This is still all a new process for us and we're learning as we go and hopefully next episode it'll get sorted out. I know halfway through this one it does, so please bear with us and it will get better. It's 6 p.m. Where are you guys? Waiting for a D&D No, oh wait, no, that's 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, but, I'm 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 hoping you're all uh, standing outside the Sleeping Dragon. Yeah, or inside. Oh, I can hear you now, Ben. Good, thank you, sir. Um, yeah, I probably would have gone like to the Sleeping Dragon, grabbed a meal there, and just waited, probably. Just pots, kind of thing. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, pretty much. Um. Just wiggling around my seat like, oh, this is exciting. All right, perfect. And uh, Brimey. Awesome. What, what you doing there, Brimey? I'm sitting outside the Sleeping Dragon. Why are you sitting outside? Yeah, okay, that's fine. <coughs> he doesn't like people. I guess yeah. he doesn't like people. All right, so you guys arrive at the Sleeping Dragon at 6 p.m. And uh, what you see is there's a bunch of different sorts of people. We're talking tall, short, humans, elves, half-orcs, halflings, dwarves, pretty much every race is going to be there. You may even see the odd ho hooded folk with, uh, with a tail peeking out the back. Which, uh, which Cat is a little no. suspicious. No, you wish, Ben. You wish. So, at 6 p.m. sharp, you're all in amongst everybody sitting in your seats, da-da-da. What you need to know about the Sleeping Dragon is the Sleeping Dragon is a brothel. And this brothel is run by a very important woman named Shelley Cook. Can you guys see that? That pop up on your screen? Um, no. Okay. Yeah, I don't see any. Good to know. Do, do, do. I have to make it work so that you can all see it. Show to players. Yeah, there we go. There we yeah. go. So Shelly Cook. Uh, she's nice the... The, I thought so. She's the owner of this um, establishment, 
uh, this establishment has, you know, it's actually a quite well-off place. There seems to be a lot of traffic going in and out. And uh, it's not just the, uh, the group of adventurers that are kind of awkwardly mingling about and talking and stuff like that. Uh, there's, there's actual, uh, there's people coming in using the services that uh, Miss Shelley Cook has to offer of her fine girls. Um, I would like all of you to roll a perception check. And where is that? It's in your character sheet. Okay. Under skills, right hand side. Skills, right hand side. Uh, and which one is it? Perception. 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 Yeah, the one that says it's perception. It's alphabetical. I yeah, see that. All right. So surprisingly, you guys are all pretty perceptive, and you can see that Miss Shelley Cook um, has probably about twenty-five girls working for her. So it's a pretty big estab establishment. Mm -hmm. um, there's stairs uh, in the back that lead up to you know the quarters where uh, the services are performed for the uh, the fee, and um, and you have Shelley just standing behind the counter, um, talking to some of the patrons, and uh, doing a bit of schmoozing, trying to drum up some uh, drum up some clientele. And you see one of the adventurers that is where is he right now? A dwarf, and I will put him in your journals so you can see him. So you have a dwarf, and he's a rugged-looking man, blonde hair. He's kind of got some leather armor, real man's man, all right? So he walks up to Miss Shelley Cook, and he says, What are we waiting for? How come we're not starting? Shelley, being a, a soft-spoken woman, uh, says, Please just wait. We'll deal with you here shortly. And Derby's like, but I, w I want, I want, I want answers now. She's like, well, you're gonna have to wait until you've been summoned. So, 15 minutes go by, and a interesting character in a cloak uh, walks in the front door, and he kind of looks, and he sees all the uh, the adventurers milling about, and he goes over and shakes Miss Shelley Cook's hand. Uh, then you see he opens a door off to the side and he looks back into the room and he says, everybody who's here due to the notice, follow me. And Brimey is sitting outside and he's left the, left the game, so he can't come along. <laughs> All right, so at this point in time, uh, you may have noticed uh, Ryan has disappeared. He had some computer issues and um, he actually wasn't able to rejoin the call. So I do a little bit of role playing for him and play his character and uh, hopefully he'll be with us, um, not next episode, but the episode after that. So um, we'll still continue on with this episode with the two characters and uh, we'll show you a little more into the story in the background of Edelant. So a, a cloaked man uh, with a full beard, walks into the room and calls all the adventurers into this back room. And now there's probably about probably a good 20 people that get into this small room with bookcases all around, and uh, there's just nothing in this room, just bookcases. So uh, it's a little strange. You're like, why, uh, why is there there's no tables, no nothing? Then the cloaked man goes over to the bookcase and uh, pulls on one of the books. Bookcase slides back and reveals a secret passage. Ooh. And this takes us to our next map, which I've made. So if it's terrible, it's terrible. It's more beautiful than I could have ever made. I don't know about that. So as you guys all can walk down the stairs, everybody kind of takes a seat. Around the uh, round tables, just sitting here and there. Um, I don't know who's who. 
I put people. Uh, Spencer, you're this fine gentleman right here. That's moving. That's yours. Are you able to click on him? No, you might if you right click on it and go to edit and then give me permission, then I can. Yeah, there we go. Control by. There you go. And then Ben, yep. you are um, the one at the bar on the left. The tiny Cause one? I, yeah, because I have nobody making tokens for me yet. Okay. All right. So uh, the gentleman comes in, and everybody's sitting around just kind of waiting. Uh, there's a barkeeper behind the bar, and... Um, I'd like you guys all to roll a perception check. Oh my gosh, okay. Jeez, you guys are pretty good at that. Uh, so the two of you notice that in the far corner, there's a purple chest up against the wall with some gold bands, and it's closed. And uh, it's nothing you've ever seen before, but you know it's something important. So the cloaked man kind of moves into the center of the room, clears his voice and says, Attention, adventurers. Uh, the interviews will be beginning in five minutes. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to direct them to myself. My name is Ravi JC. Uh, feel free to talk to our bartender, have something to drink, something to eat, and I will be calling you in one at a time. And we will continue from there. So Ravi drops back into one of the rooms as he motions for the first adventurer to come in. Probably about after five minutes, the adventurer walks and sits back down one of the tables seems kind of glum a little blue and uh, uh, Ravi pokes his head back out and this time are you guys doing anything just kind uh, of I would have definitely yeah. gone over to that chest <laughs> all right so head over to the chest and what do you do with the chest what, well, the uh, first thing I would like to do is a perception yep for sure All right, so from what you can tell, this is definitely a chest that's not just normal chest. There's something special about this. What it is, you can't quite tell, but um, you, you do notice that on the back wall, there's a little bit of a gold glow. And on the front, there is a big padlock locking this chest. Hmm. So, yeah. Well, the way Pendle looks at it is, is you know, it's, it's not going to hurt for me to just quickly take a quick peek, and then I'll just lock it back up when I'm done. All right. So uh, what skill would that be? I'm trying to guess here. That um, is going to be... Would that be sleight of hand, I guess? I should have a... No, I already oh, right, was too heavy, so I didn't take it with me. Um, so I won't get advantage on it. I'm but I it should, should be sleight of hand, I believe. Yeah. All right. So give sleight of hand a chance. Hmm. A fifteen. Uh, so you fiddle around with the lock for a couple of minutes as the first interviews are going on, and. No matter how hard you try, you can't get into this lock. This thing is, it's locked. There's no getting into it. Dang it. So, yes. Um, well, Dorn. I'd be, I'd be very go sad ahead, sorry. Back sad? Down. I'm no, very right. sad and I go sit back down. Dorn, are you uh, doing anything at this time? I'd probably be grabbing some food and drink, replenishing myself while I'm here. Okay. It, was, it was offered. Um, it, and it's, it's, it's all covered, covered so, you know, yeah. enjoy yourselves. I'm never going to no say words. that. And, you know, I'd probably just casual conversation with some of the other adventurers around. Just kill the time. Enough. And uh, what, what are you ordering? 
What are you, what are you drinking? Nah, just a nice, a nice stout ale. Okay. They're yeah, usually, believe. usually easy to come by and good to drink. Barkeep's got plenty of nice, nice ale. So as this is all going on, in Ravi peeks back into the room and pulls uh, what seems to be uh, some sort of sailor. He pulls him into the room, has a conversation with him. Five minutes go by, and the sailor comes out and he sits down at the bar. Says, "I'll have one of your finest ale." Barkeep says, "What's the occasion?" He's like, "Oh, I've been accepted." Perfect. Welcome aboard. We'll be seeing plenty of you. So this kind of raises a bit of suspicion. He's been ex accepted, and the other, uh, the first adventurer sat down. He didn't seem too happy, but it. Uh, he's still sticking around. So he uh, he motions at Dorn. Uh, uh, cleric, come this way. It's your turn. Okay. So he uh, peeks back into the room. And, and I try uh, to follow and can't move my token. Oh, you can't move it? No. Uh, oh, wait, just a second. You have to click on it first. I don't know if I gave you... Yeah, no, I definitely can't click on it. I thought it was because no. I was in pan view. All right, now try. Yeah, there we go. All right, there you go. Perfect. So, Cleric. Yes. How are you to this fine evening? Oh, I'm I'm doing very well. I hope my evening can get better, but uh, things are all we'll good see. as is. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I noticed you've got quite the shield there with uh, with the infinity sign on it. Uh, what what god are you uh, a believer of? Uh, this is uh, the symbol of the Almighty Mishkal, god of healing. Ah, very good god, very good. So what brings you to uh, to the notice board and on my way? I'm, I'm, I'm on a quest to track down a um, holy text from my, uh, from my god, uh, the, the road to everlasting life. So I, uh, I'm trying to find clues as to where this might be and your board was, uh, I forget exactly what it said, but it was led me to believe that I might be able to find some sort of information here or that might lead me in that direction. Excellent, excellent. Well, let me tell you, this is an opportunity if you're willing to accept it. Um, there will be tons of adventure, plenty of treasure, and uh, it very well might help you in the pursuit that you are uh, pursuing may uh, give you some information. It's going to lead you uh, far and wide in this uh, in the wonderful world. And uh, there'll be plenty of room for enlightening. That's for sure. You think this, uh, this sounds of something that you might be interested in? Well, if it, if it gives me a means to easily travel to gather information, I, uh, I don't see why it would be harmful to take on. It sounds like it would right. be beneficial for all parties. Excellent. Well, it definitely seems like you've got something that we will be requiring in uh, in our endeavors. So why don't you head out there, and uh, we'll we'll uh, I'll discuss more details once we've uh, limited the numbers. You may say. What you don't want a group of twenty going around? No, that's no. not suspicious at I'm, all. I'm just taking the uh, the elite of elite. Uh, if you well, I'm, I'm honored that you feel that I am elite of the elite. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. Have a seat outside, and uh, we'll continue with our evening. Okay. Go All right. Ravi peeks his head out, and this continues back and forth as the numbers dwindle lower and lower. We have um, by me sitting around. We have Pendle sitting around. We have the dwarf that was upstairs earlier. He's gone in and come out, and he's still sticking around. And uh, it looks like there is a gnome in a cloak hanging around as well. Um, by me comes in, and they have their conversation, which none of you can hear because none of you are in there. But he comes out with a big you know, shit-eating grin on. Ha, ha, ha. Goes to the... Goes to the bar. He's like, I like the strongest dwarven ale you have. Our 
keeps anything, keeps anything. Keeps so he plunks down two mugs, and by me just goes hard on him. Last but not least, we have young, young Pendle, and uh, Ravi peeks his head out and says, uh, "Halfling, follow me in." Oh, Pendle gets back. He was almost falling asleep on the table. He's like, "Oh, oh, oh yep." As he peeks inside, he's like, "Follow me." So, young halfling, tell me about yourself. What brings you to this uh, fine evening? Pendle's just rubbing his eyes a bit. Well, I spread the board, and it seemed pretty exciting. Since you have... Oh, I forgot what the board said. That's all right. <laughs> um, so it seems like you didn't enjoy waiting around too much. Is that uh, is that going to be an issue? Is there, there may be the odd waiting. Uh, no, it's, no, it's okay. It's just catching up on some sleep. But you said that if we have any questions, we can ask you them. By all means, go ahead. I lean in close to him and I go, What's in the purple chest? Depends how you answer these next questions. I may tell you. I may even show you. Pendle just immediately is wide awake. He's sitting straight up. He's like, yep, okay, I'm ready. Perfect. So, are you up for adventure? Oh, yes, I love adventure. Perfect. Did I ever tell you the time about when I was going down and there was this, oh, okay, I met a mermaid. A mermaid. A mermaid. Well, how about oh, oh. I tell you this, young halfling. Okay. Okay. If you feel up to it, I have a way that I can show you many, many things that will fill your storybooks for years and years to come. You'll see things that most people only dream of oh like what that's uh yet to be decided there's mm -hmm. so much out there and we have such a wide array of work ahead of us could you imagine uh, this like it's almost just short than three feet it's like hmm what do you <laughs> i don't know if i can trust you <laughs> we've uh we have plenty of adventures for you and if you're looking for adventure, this is the right place for you. And uh, I like I like your spunk, kid. Well, thank you. So, do you think this might be something you might be interested in? Well, so far I've heard I've heard a whole lot of nothing. Just grand grand gestures of oh, you're gonna be able to do this and that and next thing. But I don't know what any of that stuff is. Do um, what if it sucks? Well, it won't. I'll tell you that. And if you do accept, I'll probably show you what's in the purple chest. I'm in. All right. Thank you for the interview. Take a seat outside, and uh, we'll continue on our way. Okay. So now the night's gone through. A few more interviews have gone through. And you guys all notice that there's only six people sitting down in this dungeon tavern. Uh, we've got Brimey, who's drunk off his tea kettle. Uh, we have the so-called sailor, who's had a, a few brewskis. And uh, there's the dwarf that was upstairs, who was Derby Bronze Fist, sitting around. And the gnome that's sitting around. Ravi comes out and says, well, it looks like I have a bit of a, a few decisions to make. And instead of me just taking a stab in the dark, uh, we're going to put some skills to the test. So uh, first off, I would like to congratulate uh, Sagittarius Hawken. Uh, welcome to the group. And he stands up, kind of gives a wave. Everybody, oh, yeah, clap, 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 whatever. And um, I would also like to uh, welcome Dorn Greycastle to the group as well. And he gave a, a little fairy wave. And uh, for the rest of you, it looks like uh, we're going to have uh, a bit of a competition. 
bit of a competition. We will. Uh, let's start. Hey, you lied to me. <laughs> you might have to do a little. There's a few hoops to jump through, but it'll be worth it. We're going to start with uh, Pendle Lock and Key, and uh, we'll have Tweeter Bottom Smitherson. <laughs> Pendle just starts laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Tweeter bottom kind of turns and takes uh, a little bit of his scowl. All right, you two of you, I need you over here by the dartboard. Dartboard. Which is on the left side there. I knew that. That's the best dartboard I could I could draw. It's a beautiful dartboard. <laughs> Suck up. Suck up. This is good. Holy! Oops. Oh, is that... <laughs> That's a obvious name once more, so I can write it down. Uh, what is it? Uh, tw uh, Twitter bottom, Smitherson. All right. So, what we're gonna do? It's a test of skill. Um, all I need you to do is, I'm gonna give Pendle a dagger. And you're gonna oh, show up the dartboard. It's a big dagger. It's no, it's it's a special small dagger. Don't worry. <laughs> and um, so all I need you to do is roll something that I'm to decide. Right I have now. no freaking clue what it is. Would it be in a, a ranged attack roll with the dagger? That's uh, that's a that's a good one. Let's do that. All right. Oh, that's a melee attack. Oops. Oh, it's the same thing for it anyways. That's all right. All right. And can you roll a d20 for accuracy? Uh, no, I can't. Get it? Because there's 20 things in the dartboard. A 12. As, uh, as Pendle throws his arm back, whips the dagger with very high skill. And it sticks into the dartboard, no problem at all. And uh, Twitter bombs. Oh, it's just, <laughs> just luck, just luck. <laughs> Let's see what you can do. All right, Forget Twitter bottom. Ravi says it's uh, it's your turn. So, Mister Twitter bottom, he reaches into his coat and pulls a very shiny, shiny dagger, and he says. You may be wanting me to throw this dagger, but that is completely barbaric. No gnome of his right mind would ever throw a dagger. He puts it back into his coat. He then reaches in, and he pulls out a magic wand. <gasps> and, and Pendle's eyes light up. He's like, I will be performing Firebolt for all of you. Are you? like I'm more of a wizard than you'll ever be. <laughs> and Ravi's like, okay, sure, go ahead. So Twitter bottom, he waves his magic magic wand in the air and he starts humming a little tune. And then you start to see it glow at the end. And he's about to cast it. And he throws his wand up but he's got very baggy sleeves. So his sleeve flies ahead of his wand, and he catches his sleeve on fire. <laughs> and by me in his state, he's like, oh, no, there's fire. This isn't good. He grabs his mug, and he runs over and pours it on the gnome. And the gnome's just, ah, oh, what, what is this? This is, ah, oh, okay. And Ravi just kind of shakes his head and looks at the gnome and says, all you had to do was throw a dagger, and you've lit yourself on fire, and a gnome had to throw beer on you. This is unacceptable. Pendle, welcome to the group. And Twitter Bottom stomps off as he heads upstairs and out, out the door, and you hear the do door slam on his way out. Ravi goes over and shakes <laughs> Pendle's, Pendle's hand.
<laughs> that was odd. That was very strange. Where'd I lose you? Was that just me or was that you guys too? That was everybody. Uh, he lit it on fire and then ale was thrown on it. Oh, man, you missed the good part. Um, all right, so Ravi says, Twitter bottom, all you had to do was throw a dagger at a dartboard and you've ended up lighting yourself on fire and getting beer thrown all over you. This is the inexperience that will get us all killed when we encounter some of the magical beasts that we'll be running into. Unfortunately, you're out. Pendle, welcome to the group. Oh, thank you. Reach down, do shake I get, your hand. Do I get to see what's in the chest now? In good time, Pendle, in good time. I just frown. All right, by me and Derby, it's your turn. Come take a seat at the at the bench. So they they come over to the table. He's like, "All right, it's very simple. I want to see who's the strongest. I want a good old fashioned arm wrestling." So that's all they have to do. So we're going to I say it's a roll off to see who he stays in. It's a roll off. I gotta get Bimey's character sheet skills. Uh, athletics check. And Fuck. he gets a 20. By me gets a 20. And we will roll for, it's not natural 20, right? So we're okay. And uh, I forget his name. What was his name? Derby. Derby, Derby rolls more like Derby. seven. Yeah. So as this goes, uh, by me starts to uh, he takes takes the upper hand, which is which is good for him. He's uh, you know he's he's drunk. He's had a few drinks and all that. But uh, there there is more than just one burst of speed. So Derby makes a push and he rolls a six. Beautiful. And by me rolls a seven, so he's still slowly inching this lower and lower to the table. He's Derby's getting so close to tapping out. And on the last burst of strength, Derby tries so hard, ever so hard, to push his way back up. And by me just smashes his hand down onto the table, breaking poor by me, er, Derby's hand. Ouch. By me stands up, puts his hand in the air. He's like, I'm the greatest dwarf. I'm the greatest and the drunkest dwarf here. I'll always be. Derby grabs his hand. So this, is, uh, this isn't over by me. You'll be seeing more of me as he stumbles up the stairs, clutching his hand. Ravi says, well, uh, Derby's gone. I was going to award the loser, but uh, I guess he's already gone. So, by me, welcome to the group. So, he's like, all right, gentlemen, and half gentlemen. Hey. Or like third gentlemen. <laughs> I have assembled you all here to become part of a very elite group. I have an opportunity for you that is once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm here on behalf of a very important man and uh, he has some skills for you or has some has some events that he would like for you to uh, carry out for him. Um, there is a few things that we need to get off the table in the first place. Uh, you will like be what's in the chest. Well, we'll see. We'll see. If you're lucky, Pendle. If you're lucky, you'll be working for my employer, who you don't get to know. That information doesn't need to be known at this time. And to be honest, I don't even know who he is. But he's a man who has a lot of power and a lot of wealth, and he has a big opportunity for you. This basement that you see here, this will become your uh, office of operation. 
you're allowed to stay here for free. Drink will be free. Food will be free. And he will do his best to accommodate you in all his needs. Nice. There's one thing he asks, though. He will give you a quest, and you will complete it. Not many questions asked. And uh, if you are to receive any payment, which, of course, you will be. We, would, we don't do this for free. And if you were to find of anything of great value, uh, the item will be given to myself, and it will be directed to this employer of yours. As well, the employer gets a cut of everything you make because he is giving you a place to live, and he's providing you shelter and some goodies that I'll be showing you here. Any questions so far? The room's silent. Until Sagittarius pipes up, how much does this bastard want? Well, this bastard will be leading you through adventures and keeping you alive, will be requiring a 45% cut. Does anybody have any issues with this amount of cut? Uh, how the hell is he leading us through adventures and keeping us alive if we don't even get to know who he is? Well, he's a very powerful man. And he's giving you work. You'll never need to search for work again. Yeah, I get that part. I don't and get the keeping if, us alive. If you accept, you will be provided with some of the finest armor and weapons that money can buy. While he's saying all that, can I try and sneak back over to the chest and try and unlock it again? For sure. Roll a, roll a stealth check. All right, all right. A 19. Oh, 23. Hmm, that's quite, that's pretty good. And Ravi rolls a four. Uh, he's, he's very, Ravi's very busy uh, talking to. Well, I didn't want to interrupt him. Exactly. He's very, he's very busy talking to Dorn, and uh, Pendle successfully uh, sneaks on over to uh, the chest. What, what are you going to be doing at the chest? I'm going to try and open it again. All right, all right. Spencer, uh, why do you keep fondling with the chest? <sighs> Unfortunately, uh, you try and try, and it just doesn't work. Well, and Ravi looks up. Oh, go ahead. Uh, just kind of sit there then and wait for him. <laughs> Ravi hears the, uh, the, the lock rattling. He's pendle. Oh, I was, was just checking it. Everything still seems to be here. Young halfling, join us around the table. We'll get there soon enough. <sighs> he sighs very loudly and slowly walks over there. <laughs> as, uh, as for helping you along your way, um, there'll be tons of opportunity for enlightenment to grow become stronger, to become the true adventurers that you'd really want to be. Um, does anybody have any issues with the with the amount that the owner has uh, has posted? It seems steep. It seems steep. Okay. Because it's now it's forty five percent of. Well, no matter how you cut it, it's so we it's, do forty-five percent. So half of what we bring in almost goes to that, and the other half is split between four of us. So, if he gets forty-five percent, mm -hmm. then how does that mean? How do we know exactly where to like cut the objects so that he gets? Well, the objects will be. The objects will be given to me, and I will appraise them, and then we will be paid out accordingly. What do you mean paid? We just get money? Well, money, trinkets. Well, what do you say that? Maybe if the item's no use to the, uh, the employer, he may just give it to you. The 45% goes to your room and board, your training facilities, your food, and as well as we are renting this place from 
uh, the lovely Shelly Cook upstairs. So we do have to pay her a portion as well. Mm -hmm. So it's 45%. It may seem like a lot, but uh, there is room for negotiation once he's seen the, uh, the type of work that you can bring in. And uh, we can go from there if everybody's okay with that. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm well, I'm cool with it. All right. I'm sure he'll be Good. willing to negotiate once we've proven our worth. Good, because it's going to be five percent. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> All right, Pendle, follow me. <gasps> Finally. And Ravi walks over to the purple chest, and everybody else. Rimy follows. Yeah. As well as Sagittarius. Everybody else follows over. And Except for Rami. the old Pendle, Pendle, who's most interested in it. <laughs> He's sitting on his ass falling asleep. Exactly. So Pendle runs up, starts jumping. Goody, goody. Uh, Ravi pulls a key from around his neck, puts it into the chest, and opens it up. And there's a huge golden glow. It fills the entire room. And he's like, all right, Pendle, here we go. First thing's for you. And he reaches into the chest, and he pulls out halfling-sized leather armor. It's special armor, as it's been specially crafted at half the weight of normal leather armor. And this will allow you to move quickly and not be detected. He then reaches in and pulls out a halfling sized short bow as well as a rapier and a few more daggers and he hands all these to young pendle and he says pendle this is what you will need on your adventure to become the great adventurer that you will be and he puts it down in halfling's hand says i hope you accept these gifts from our employer and uh, I hope you use them wisely. Pendle accepts them, says thank you. But we're also still kind of looking in there, hoping there's something else. <laughs> <laughs> Roll a perception check. Ah, cool. An 11. <laughs> Pendle looks in and he sees a yellow glow. And that's all. It, it looks like a just yellow he sees no bottom just a yellow glow well pendle is very disappointed but he walks back <laughs> he also hands him a little coin purse with a few few gold pieces in it which should bring you up to whatever pendle has for money <laughs> uh, i have 15. 15 gold pieces all right well there you go all right, he calls over uh, <clears throat> Sagittarius, and he reaches in, and he pulls out uh, some leather armor for the human, as well as a shield. And then he pulls out a dagger and a hand crossbow and a heavy crossbow. He says, Sagittarius, here's your armor that you'll be using. Best of luck on your adventures, and I'm sure we'll be seeing more of you. So you're just kind of... Stoops back, sits on his stump, and starts drinking again. We have uh, Brimey comes up. Brimey, here you go. He hands him a great axe, which is almost the size of the dwarf, if not bigger. And he also hands him some javelin for the dwarf. And the dwarf looks quite confused on what the javelin are. He's like, trust me, you'll need them. He also reaches in and pulls out a shield, and the dwarf, or Brimey, says, How come no armor? You don't deserve any armor. You're strong enough as you are. He's like, hmm, kind of confused, stumps, slumps away, goes and sits back down and starts drinking his face off. And then Dorn, uh, Ravi reaches in, and he pulls out a, a large mace. I hands it to Dorn. 
And then he also reaches in and pulls out chainmail armor for Dorne. He says, this, this is what you'll be needing for your adventure. Oh, and, wonderful. Uh, hopefully it comes back in one piece. Well, thank you very much. All right, gentlemen. It's been a long night, and we must get some rest as we have an early start in the morning. The bedrooms are on the side here. Feel free to mingle, but I suggest you promptly hit the hay as we have a very early morning tomorrow. And uh, he then disappears. He's like, good night, and we'll see you in the morning with your first, uh, first adventure. And he okay. subsides into his, his uh, room. So what did, you guys do? what did he do? With, did he close the chest? Oh. Uh, after going into his room, he realizes he left the chest open. And he says, Pendel, he's like, Pendel, I wouldn't recommend getting that close to this chest. Why does it glow and there's nothing in there? Because it leads somewhere else. And he quickly closes the chest, locks it up, hides the key. Mm. And have yourself a good night, Pendle. Can I do a persuasion check to see where he hid the key? I mean, not a persuasion. A persuasion. Perception. I'm going to sure. persuade. Uh, Tell me where the key is. Dang it, my perception is only a plus one. You can tell he hit it on him. And then he disappears into his room and closes and locks the door behind him. <laughs> All right. So there you go. We have stuff. What uh, What would you guys like to do? It's, uh, it's probably about 9 p.m. right now. So it's been three hours of just putzing around, getting things set up. Um, there's a dartboard off to the side. One of the tables has some dice set up and some cards. Um, the barkeep says, if you'd like any food, I can ring up upstairs and we'll get it brought down for you with no problems at all. Mm. So. Hmm. Well, Pendle's very restless right now because he had to sit through all that and get really excited and then be very disappointed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no it's, it's it's, not, it was good. It's not my fault you guys chose boring armor. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what that's what my character came with. I know out of character that was awesome. In character, he's okay. Just, uh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, I could see him being a little disappointed. But he did see a mage light himself on fire. Yeah. Oh, that's who I want to go try and find. You you'd like to go try and find him? All right. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, uh, so I guess you head upstairs. All right. And uh, you're in the book room. Where do you go from there? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will. Well, he lit himself on fire. So the first thing Pendle thinks about is he's going to sniff. See if he can sniff him out. All right. Uh, a tracking roll. I believe, or survival, I think it is. Oh, shit. Yeah. Mm, seven. He smells burnt, but that's all he can smell. Hmm. Well, in that case, he will walk out into the main, or walk back out into the the area before the bookcase room. The, book, the, the main lobby. All yeah, right. The main lobby and see if there's anyone there that he might be able to talk to. All right. So Pendle heads out, and he kind of stands and looks around, and um, he notices that uh, a female is approaching him, and this is what she looks like. There we go. So this blonde dancer uh, proceeds to step 
towards uh, Pendle and says, Oh, aren't you so cute? Uh, excuse me? I am a brave adventurer. Oh, is that cute. so? You're still very cute, though. <sighs> People don't understand. What can I do for you? I'm looking for... Did you see a, a gnome come up here? He would, uh... He lit himself on fire. Mm. Hopefully by then he put himself out. Might be I, little... I, I haven't seen any gnomes. I've just been with a client. But um, I have I think I would have heard about a, a gnome that was on fire running through here. <laughs> kind of laughs. Yeah, it would be pretty funny to see. <laughs> um, Do you we know can if go... anybody else I could check with? We can uh, check with Shelly Cook and uh, the owner and see if she's seen anybody. Oh, it's a good idea. She's like, here, I'll take you over to her. Uh, and she's like, what's your name? I'm Pendle Lockenkey. Pendle, it's nice to meet you. I'm Sonia Greenvale. It's I'm nice to meet you, too. One of the employees at this beautiful establishment. <laughs> Beautiful. That's quite the word. You know, Pendle has no idea what a brothel is. Perfect. All right. Like, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, Shelly, this uh, this cute little adventurer here has a few questions for you. Do you think you can help him up? And Shelly's standing behind a bar, and she just looks, and she just sees Sonia. <laughs> I, I climb up onto the stool. <laughs> Oh, oh, there he is. Uh, yes. What, what can I'm I looking, do for you? I'm looking for a gnome. He came up from downstairs. I Might know. have been. I don't. He shouldn't have been on fire at that point. I'm pretty sure he put himself out by then. Hmm. Well, I, I've seen a lot of adventurers running out this way, but uh, unfortunately, I've been given strict orders that I'm not allowed to let anybody out. It looks like you're. Uh, so he's still You're, here. Well, no, the adventurers have gone. But you as a group, you all must stay within the walls of the Sleeping Dragon tonight. This looks, this doesn't look like the answer you were expecting. And I was just like, oh, what do, he's just thinking to himself, what do I do now? That was my, that was my closest chance of meeting a wizard. Well, Pendle. Let me tell you, I know the employer, and I know that you'll have plenty more chances to be meeting wizards and magic and all sorts of wonderful adventures are really? in your future. Mm -hmm. oh, and let me awesome. tell you, the sooner you get to bed, the sooner you wake up, and the sooner you can start. Oh, that's a little true. wink. Well, I better do that. All right. Do I know where you my bed is? You take yourself downstairs. Okay. In the morning. <clears throat> I will go back downstairs. <laughs> I, well, in this case, Pendle tries to sleep, but he has very. Diff it's very difficult for him to do so. Fair enough. He spends Fair a long time enough. just lying there thinking about wizards. All right, uh, and you can choose which room you want. Oh, nice. I will go here. All right, and uh, Dorn, what have you been doing in this time? I think I would have just been bullshitting with uh, the other two guys, uh, Brime and Sagittarius. Just kind of like, hey, nice job getting in. What do you think you're expecting? That sort of idle chit chat, and, and uh, none of them really know what they're what they're getting in for. It's all been kind of kept in the dark, and uh, the the two of them they they're getting pretty deep into the the drink, so they're starting to make less and less sense. Yeah, and uh, well, as, as as they start to make less and less sense, I'm going to call it quits. I'm just saying, I'm going to hit the hey guys. I'll see you guys in the morning. Perfect, perfect. We'll see you in the morning there, cleric. And then they continue to drink most of the night. And
probably around three or four in the morning they'll stumble into their into their rooms and crap all right at this point we are going to uh, complete this episode we've been introduced to all the characters fully now uh, we've been introduced to what they will be doing they'll be working for a unnamed gentleman um, they have Ravi there to support them and uh, it looks like they've put together a little adventurers guild so this has been the end of sort of the introduction and the setup of this story um, this point on we'll be jumping into our pre-written campaign and next episode we will definitely be um, enduring some uh, some interaction with some hostile characters so i hope you enjoyed it um if you did be sure to leave a like comment subscribe any of those on youtube uh if you are watching this well nowhere else because i'm not putting it anywhere else yet if you want to see this on a podcast be sure to let me know um check us out on social media as well as uh check us out on thursday august 27th as that'll be the next time that we are live streaming the link will be down below 6 p.m pacific standard time uh we hope to see you there if not they will be posted on the youtube channel as well so on that note we'll see you next time